going on. But when the enemy comes, no, I'm not gonna run. I'm gonna suit up, get tough, put on the armor of God. Yeah, cause I fight to win, I break through any change you try to put me in. Uh, cause I'm strong, got my armor on. The devil's gonna run when he hears this song. by faith and we've gone through Hebrews 11 all the faith heroes and we've learned a lot from each one of these men that have been and women that have been listed in Hebrews 11 but let me tell you boys and girls I want you to think about this if we were to write a chapter in the Bible today and we would call it um, heroes of faith in choose life kids would you be in that chapter? Yes. Some of you have given your testimonies. You did things by faith. You gave somebody $20 and by faith you received another $20. You were healed by faith. You believed you received by faith. You had favor with your dance teacher. All right, we have a bunch of doers of the word here in Choose Life Kids. And so because they did the word, guess what they have? A testimony. So, Zaylin and Zoe are going to share together. Arlie and Peyton, will y'all come up and share your testimony? If you have something, a testimony is something maybe you're believing God for, and it happened. It manifested. We have these little cards right over there at the Connect Center. You can fill one out. Just drop it in there, and we'll grab it the next time we do testimony time. So, Zoe and Zaylin, will you share yours? Yes. So, um, we had been believing for a full bed. And then we had looked at, uh, we had been looking for beds mm -hmm. and we were just looking at them because we were going to put them on a prayer board. And those end up the ones that we were believing for end up not coming past because we found better ones. Mm -hmm. And um, so we kept believing and believing. 
and um, I had sent a prayer testimony and not prayer testimony, prayer a prayer request in my Bible uh, Bible reading. I put uh, full beds and um, uh, beds and she'll share the rest of it. Okay. So whoever knows Michael, well he passed away and so his brother got all his stuff and all his stuff and uh, he gave us a thousand dollars for uh, our birthday money and, and um, well, we I, we didn't know yet because my mom and dad were somewhere and, and somebody was babysitting us and so um, uh, we were like, so once they got home, uh, my dad's like, um, have, you to, have you told them about what Rob sent into the email? And so um, sh they shared with us and uh, my mom said that was like really good because uh, he didn't even know about our beds. He just uh, gave us a thousand dollars because he knew Zoe's birthday was coming up and mine already passed. And because um, we told him our birthday party, um, and uh, so he gave us a thousand dollars. And then my mom's like, "That's powerful because you got your bed." So, so good. Instead of getting full beds, we got queen beds. Praise That's God, like even more. bigger. And drawers. God is so good. That's so awesome. Do you notice, even Michael Neal's brother, we're believing God for him. He hasn't accepted Jesus into his life. And the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And whenever you just believe, it's like people will begin to give to you. And they're like, I don't even know why I'm giving you this money, but I just feel like I have to give you this money. Like it's like every night I think about giving you this. That's what's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. Whenever people agreed in faith, it happened. So Arlie, will you share yours? So my uncle, he got a house from two years and not say no to drugs. He Praise got, the Lord. He got a house. Praise God. That's so good. Yes, yeah, say no to drugs. That is so awesome. Arlie, thank you for sharing that. Peyton? So, so my dad, he, um, he's been receiving in his elbow and his, his, his whole right, the right part of his side of his body. And um, he has he had gout. If y'all don't know what that is, it's like something in your body that's just like it feels like needles in your body over and over. But anyways, he, we went to the doctor because he kept taking this medicine. And it didn't seem like working, so we went to the doctor's office, and we found out the problem is because he was eating too much meat. And so then um, on this last eat. Um, my dad, uh, Pastor Faith prayed with me, and then as soon as we got home, he was moving his arm and moving his arm, moving his legs, um, and he couldn't really, he had to just hold it like this, but he can't lift it so far right now, but he can move it and wiggle it. And Praise the Lord. God is so good. He is so faithful. Let's just go ahead and thank God right now. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we thank you that what has happened for someone else can happen for us if we're just willing to step out in faith and believe what your word says. So God, we thank you right now. We thank you for these testimonies. We thank you, Father God, for the things in our life, God, that we're believing for. We thank you for a suddenly, a supernatural manifestation of those things, and we'll give you all the glory and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey kids, it's time to learn and grow. So get out your Bible, your notebook, your your pencil and write down what stands out to you today because the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. It's now time to learn and grow. Matthew 6.10, are y'all there? All right. I'm there too. Look what it says. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So Pastor Kathy talked to us on Thursday. We recapped what she taught us on Sunday. And tonight we're going to start looking at what is in heaven. Pastor Kathy shared a verse with us that said there's no pain, there's no sadness, there's no crying in heaven. So how am I going to bring heaven to earth? Say, how am I? How am I going to bring heaven to earth? Well, it's up to you and I as believers to bring heaven to earth, right? Each of us have a job to bring heaven to earth. And if you're in here and you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life yet, then we're going to give you an opportunity at the end of service. But we have to bring heaven to earth. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, bringing to earth, just what Jesus bring to, br brought to earth, Jesus brought salvation. If you're taking notes, that's what we're talking about tonight bringing 
salvation to earth. Bringing salvation to earth. See, Jesus brought salvation to earth, right? He came to earth. He died on the cross. He rose again. And so now everyone can accept him as Lord of their life and be saved. They can accept salvation, right? So now for those of us who have already accepted Jesus, it's our job to bring salvation. Is Jesus going to keep coming down and and showing people the way? No, it's up to us. We have to show people the way to heaven by bringing them salvation. We're going to bring heaven to earth by bringing people salvation. Go in your Bibles really quick to Acts 4. So you're going to go to the right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. The book of Acts. This is when the church really got started. Good job. This is when the church really got started. Jesus had already gone to heaven. And so now he told the disciples, Mark 16, 15, go into the world and preach the gospel, right? What was the gospel that they were supposed to preach? Salvation. Salvation. The good news. And the good news is, hey, if you're poor, you don't have to be. If you're going to hell, you don't have to. If you're sick, you don't have to be. This was the good news. And so look what Peter did. Peter said, okay, I've accepted salvation, so now it's my job to bring salvation to others. Now, are you personally getting people saved? Like, Are you personally saving people? No, you're giving them an opportunity to accept Jesus. Acts 4.12, look what it says. Neither is there salvation. Peter's preaching here. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given men whereby we must be saved. So what is doing? What is Peter doing? Peter is having a sermon. And he's standing in front of people and he's saying, Hey guys, if you want to be saved, you must call on Jesus. Jesus is your way to salvation. How do I bring heaven to earth? I bring salvation. I show people the way to accept Jesus. Just like last night at Ornites, 15 people gave their life to Jesus. Why? Because a handful of people went out and gave Jesus. They shared Jesus. They brought heaven to earth. See, every time you share the good news, what are you doing? You're bringing heaven to earth. You're making a way for people to be saved from hell. And y'all, hell is an awful place. And people that don't know Jesus, they're in a, they're in a really bad place right now. You know, the world, our society, everything's going haywire. People are acting crazy. People are turning their back on them and turning their back on them. It's crazy out there. And people that don't have Jesus, guess what? It's crazy for them. But for you and I as a believer, we have Jesus. Our kingdom is not of this world, right? But it's up to us to bring heaven to earth so that more people can have peace. Because y'all, it's not going to get just like better. Do you understand? The world is going to get darker. But the Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Well, where is it going to abound? It's going to abound in you and I being willing to bring salvation, being willing to share Jesus with our neighbor, maybe going with our parents whenever we're at Walmart or whenever we're at the store or whatever. Maybe we're at a friend's house and we don't know if they know Jesus. It's as simple as saying, hey, do you know Jesus? If you die tonight, would you go to heaven? I can say a prayer with you. Well, I don't know the prayer. Well, at the bus, we have the prayer. It's up to us to bring heaven to earth. How do I bring heaven to earth? What do I do? Salvation. I give people an opportunity to get saved. That's what Peter did. There was another man that did that exact same thing, and his name was Philip. We've talked about him before. Go over to Acts 8. Acts 8. Acts 8. Look at what happened here. The angel of the Lord, I'm going to read this story to you. Follow along in your Bible. The angel of the Lord, oh, that was out there. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, get up and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. So Philip rose up just like Um, during or nights, what do we do? We pray in the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God tells us exactly where to go. The Spirit of God told um, a group of kids to go to CVS. And so they went to CVS. They, They saw this girl and they just knew on the inside, I need to share heaven with her. 
So they went up to her, they prayed with her, and then she went home and she was crying. She was telling her daughter who goes to this church, who her daughter has been inviting her to the church. She said, there was a group from a church and they prayed for me. And the daughter was so glad because someone shared heaven with her mom. It wasn't just her saying, yeah, you need to come to church, you need to come to church. It was somebody else that shared heaven, that cared about what she was going through. She was getting medicine for her, for her brother. She was getting medicine for her son. She was getting a whole bunch of medicine because they were sick. But this group came and prayed with her. And so she was brought to tears, right? It moved her. Well, what was that? That was someone bringing heaven to earth. So just like that, an angel spoke to Philip and told Philip, go to the desert, the way to Gaza. And look what else happened. He went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, had charge, had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot and reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join yourself. So now Philip is running after this man. Why is Philip doing this? What is he trying to bring? Heaven to earth. He's bringing salvation, right? It's our job to bring heaven to earth. Now this seems like super crazy. You're walking behind a chariot and now the spirit of God tells you to run and catch the chariot. Okay. How many of you know horses are a little bit faster than humans? right? Maybe he wasn't going full speed, but whatever it was, Philip wasn't just like walking fast, you know, like speed walking. He was having to like jog or run. I don't know how in shape he was, but he had to get up to him. This seemed crazy, but guess what? To Philip, it wasn't crazy. Why? Because he knew this is my job. This is why I'm here on this planet to bring heaven to earth. And if I'm not getting my directions from him, then what am I doing? What am I bringing? I'm bringing flesh. I'm bringing my ideas. Where's that going to get somebody? Where is my flesh going to get somebody? Hell, hell on earth. It's not going to help them. It's going to make things worse. And so Philip said, okay, well, this is kind of crazy. But he ran thither. He ran to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, hey, do you even understand what you're saying? And he said, how can I? Someone needs to explain it to me. And so, um, Philip got in the chariot with the eunuch, with the Ethiopian, and began to explain it to him. And the Ethiopian said, okay, well, can I be baptized? And he said, well, do you believe in Jesus? He said, I believe in Jesus. So right then he got saved. And then he said, all right, we'll baptize you. Pull over. There's some water right here. We're going to baptize you. And then immediately after he came out of the water, Philip baptized him. Philip was literally translated to a whole nother place, and it wasn't Gaza. Do you know that God told Philip to go down that road for that one man. Why? Because it's so important that we bring heaven to earth. It's not about being on a stage. It's not about talking to crowds. It's about the one man. See, God said, Philip, you go to that road unto Gaza. And then the Bible even says, it goes on, and he was, um, he was lifted up into a whole nother place. Let me read. And the eunuch answered, he was baptized. And Philip, when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, the eunuch, and Philip was found in Azotus and passing through and preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Nothing about Gaza. He went down that road, why? Because God knew that that man needed heaven and he was gonna use Philip to bring heaven to earth. You and I, we have to realize there are people that are spiritually attached to our life that need heaven. And it's our job to get the cues from the Father and bring heaven to those people. And that's salvation. There's a couple that works in, um, they work with Ramah and they're um, in Samoa. We read the story in Life Internship about whenever, whenever, if we don't come back, send more. If we don't come back, send more. Remember the story, send more, send more. Well, this was this island of Samoa. This couple, this lady, her husband is still sitting down, but this lady that we're gonna watch, she was at Keith Moore's church at the beginning of last year, 2020. And Brother Keith was collecting an offering for them. They have to have these ships in order to go to these islands. They're literally the uttermost parts of the earth. Go in your Bibles to Acts 1-8. See, it's up to me to bring heaven to earth. And how do I bring heaven to earth? By bringing salvation. I have to make a way for people to receive Jesus. Yes, they can look at creation. Yes, they can maybe catch something on YouTube. But do you know how much it matters? When somebody physically comes to them and looks in their eyes and says, hey, there's a better way to live. There's a better way to live. God has a plan for your life. Man, that makes all the difference. People's hearts literally just melt. Well, why is that? Because people are desperate for heaven. Look what it says in Acts 1-8. 
But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. This woman is literally in the uttermost parts of the earth. And I want you just to take a look. She's stepping up to the stage. Brother Keith is just now calling her up to the stage, and she's thanking him, obviously, for receiving this offering. But I want you to listen to how she talks about the lost and how she talks about what she is called to do. Take a look at this. Opportunity to, to say thank you at a time like this. Uh, just those two words in our English language seem very inadequate for everything that Brother Moore and Mrs. Moore have done for us in our personal lives, but also with the ministry. And they've given us the opportunity to do something great for God in the uttermost part of the earth. As Brother Moore said, that was the last thing that Jesus said before he left, that the gospel would make it to the uttermost part of the earth. And you can't get any further from Jerusalem than the South Pacific Islands. Even when Brother Moore came, he said, you don't get to that island that you're on by accident. No. You don't just suddenly say, oops, we found Samoa. No. We're seeing, and especially as missionaries, I, I take the verse, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. To me, as long as the sun rises every morning and sets every night, there needs to continue to be on this earth salvation messages accompanied by altar calls. Yeah. There needs to be seed time and harvest, yeah. the preaching and teaching of the yeah. word of God with an accompanying altar call. There also, as long as the earth remains, there needs to be Bible training centers. And we believe at our Bible training centers, this is one of the things the Lord said to me two years ago. He said, Patty, as a ministry gift, I expect you to train people the way I did when I was on the earth. I expect you to train people the way I trained the 12 and the way I train the 70, and I expect you to get the same results because there's a ministry gift on your life to teach. So our mission is to raise a standard in the word of God in the South Pacific and purchasing this building for us, it's gonna ensure that altar calls are gonna keep going out and going out, not just this generation, but once we own that, the next generation is set up. They don't have to worry about this. There's a paid for state of the art facility yes. that they can just get up and begin yes. every morning preaching and teaching salvation messages, training men and women to go out and minister churches started in that beautiful ship. We believe that someday just the same way Peter stood up for the first time on earth and he was blessed to give the first public salvation message. Aren't you glad that Peter didn't quit? There's some things you might not see in your future. You, you don't want to miss some things in your future. And on the day of Pentecost, it was him that stood up and he gave the first salvation message on the earth publicly and thousands of people came in and believed and received the Lord. We understand that someday on earth, somewhere on earth, a man or woman will stand up. And just the same way there was a first salvation yeah, message, yeah. there's going to be a last, last salvation one message That's the right. last man to stand on earth yeah. and for the last time preach jesus christ yeah. and him crucified and give the opportunity yeah. for people to receive him Thank you, Lord. and the last knees will bow and the last tongues will confess yeah. that jesus christ is lord and the last names will be written in the lamb's book of yeah. life and the Lord yeah. will give the nod oh, and the hallelujah. book will close and the trumpet will sound. That's right. Woo. Isn't that so cool what she said? There was, Peter gave the first salvation. He was the first one after Jesus left to bring heaven to earth. And there's going to be a last one. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the company that is the last one, that holds nothing back, that goes hard after my relationship with God, the things of God personally, and then everywhere I go, being led by him. Hey, go talk to that kid. Hey, go, go minister to that lady. Hey, go pray with that man. Being quick to hear. Why? Because this is why we're still here, to bring heaven to earth. And that starts with bringing salvation. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. 
I want to give some of you an opportunity in here. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. This is the best decision that you'll ever make. There is a heaven, there is a hell, but more importantly than that, God has a call on your life. And the way you step into that call is by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're in here tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't know where you'll spend eternity, the Bible says you must be born again. And it's as easy as a prayer. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. If that's you, you've never said that before. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would, just raise your hand long enough for a leader to see your hand. They're going to bring you a card that says, I got saved today. Just keep your hand up until you get that card. This is the most important decision you'll ever make. God loves you. He's for you. He has a plan for your life. He knew you while you were in your mother's womb. All right, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And then after we pray that prayer, I'm going to pray over all of you. I believe this is going to be an amazing week, amazing weekend for each of you. You're going to see visions just like Philip did. You're going to have visions. You're going to hear God's voice, his instruction, so you can bring heaven to earth. I would encourage you, if you don't know the salvation prayer, just go to the bus and grab it. And anytime you're talking to someone, just pull it out and have them repeat it after, the, after you. This it doesn't have to look a certain way. You don't have to have anything memorized, right. right? People don't care. They just want out of hell and hell on earth. So bow your heads and close your eyes. If you receive that card for the first time, you're gonna say this after me loud and strong. And those of us that are here that are already saved, we're gonna say it with you. Say, Father God, Father God thank, you thank you for sending Jesus, for sending Jesus to, die to die on the cross just for me. Just for me. I believe that he died. And he rose again. And, he rose again. and, right, now, and right now, I make him Lord, make him Lord of, my life. of my life. My sins are washed away. My, sins are washed away. my, past, is my past is forgiven. And my future is bright. And my future is bright. Thank, you, God, Thank you, God, for making me, for making me a, part of your family. a part of your family. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Now, really quick, I'm going to pray over all of you. If you would just want to put your hand on the neighbor's next to your shoulders. We're going to pray. Father God, I come before right now, and I just thank you, Father God, for peace that passes all understanding in each of these children. God, their families, their homes that they represent, I speak peace over their families in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that no fear, no depression, no anxiety can exist in their world. I thank you that they keep their minds fixed and focused on you. You are such a good God. And so, God, I thank you, Lord, that they hear your voice this week. I thank you that they have opportunities to share your love and share your goodness and bring heaven to earth by bringing salvation salvation to people that are needing to be saved. And we thank you for it. In Jesus name, everyone says. Making Jesus the Lord of your life is such a big deal. Make sure you go to our Connect Center or email us at infokids at choosefobs.com and let us know. The next step is being water baptized. Water baptism is an outward sign on what happens on the inside when we make Jesus the Lord of our life. So make sure you get with your parents on being water baptized. Congratulations, kids, on making Jesus the Lord of your life.